March 8th, 2011. This is another installment of Edible Acres. We're at a, a set of greenhouses out here in Trumansburg, New York, that there'll be another video to give a proper introduction to them. But what I wanted to show today was uh, first round of seed starting. It's the first week of March, second week of March, I guess. And in here, it's starting to get upwards to 60, 70, 80, and sometimes 90 degrees during the day when it's sunny out, depending how cold it is. Even if it's like 20, 25 degrees outside on a sunny day, it's getting really warm in here. So I thought it's time to start some seeds. Um, let's see. So these are all salvaged seed starts, or seed starting trays, I should say. Uh, these greenhouses were abandoned a couple years ago, and what was left was all over the place. There were pots and things related to a seed starting business that was here before. Um, and so we've accumulated them, built some shelves to store them inside, and are using them again for starting our own seeds. And let's see. Novel idea here. You can see the the tags, or the markers for each of these, are actually made out of split bamboo. It's a variety I found down uh, along the Delaware River in New Jersey. I cut up a bunch and brought back here, and I cut them to length and split them with a little buck knife. And so these are biodegradable and should be pretty sturdy. Just use a graphite pencil on them, so if it breaks down the soil, it's not a big deal. You can see I got the date, and here's a flat of anise hyssop. Here's some right next to it as well. You can see the two look different because this is a normal seed starting mix on the right and same on the left here, but a friend of mine runs a flour mill right next to here um, called Farmer Ground Flour. You should look them up online if you're in the Ith Ithaca or Finger Lakes area. Anyway, he has a whole, bu <clears throat> whole bunch of uh, buckwheat hulls, and so he's got this huge bag of them that I dropped off here, and I'm trialing them as a mulch for seed starting. So that's what's happening here. You can see along all through here, you know, here's an example of arugula and arugula, but the one on the left has all that buckwheat hull, uh, just to see if that improves germination or improves water retention and all that. Uh, speaking of water, you can see at the very back, the northwest corner of the greenhouse is a 1,500-gallon cistern, which is a huge benefit to us to have here. And there's a black tube that goes into the top of it. You can see right there, and that runs all the way along here, back along, hits a T in the corner. Sorry, it's a mess over there. Goes outside, we have a segment that's out right now. That goes all the way down, connects up in series down to that pond over there, in which there is a sump pump that's submerged in a five gallon bucket with holes punched in it so silt doesn't clog it. We plug in that sump pump, you can see there's an extension line here. Obviously it's not in service in the winter. But that sump pump goes on slowly but surely fills this half inch diameter black inflexible tubing up through here. And all along this are tiny, tiny pinprick holes that have been drilled. So as it's as it's filling, it's shooting little arcs of water to water all these uh, other garden beds, which we'll look at at another time. It goes in there, fills that up, and then from there there's a delivery at the bottom I can open up that brings to a hose all along the south edge. Right now I'm using the hose to kind of define the edge of the pathway off to the left here is direct seeded uh, cilantro and mush and kale and kohlrabi and all the like and some raspberries are being propagated. So the hose keeps us in line so we know to stay out to the right of it. Anyway, use the hose, fill these little guys up and then use that to fill the watering can and then start watering. Seems cumbersome but this way we don't actually have to have a well here. Uh, and we just use a standard half horsepower sump pump, you know, once a month, once every other week, something like that, uh, to keep this whole area watered. And also in the theme of keeping things watered, I just hung these huge sheets. There's an off-roll of Egyptian cotton that was donated to some friends of mine. And so I cut these lengths, hung them on uh, really heavy gauge uh, electric wire, stainless steel electric fencing wire, in between these trellises and then just stapled them along the top with a standard staple doo -doo 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 -doo, right down the line. So these huge sheets are hanging here facing or just 
south of all these flats. So, and they're kind of aligned right now so that midday sun is blocked from hitting these flats. Until these things germinate, I really don't want them to get overwhelmed with uh, sun heat and the drying power of the sun. So these sheets kind of help that. And then once they germinate, they can slide back kind of like curtains to let more light into here. Once these guys are established enough, they'll get transplanted into these garden beds uh, and then out into the field as appropriate. Uh, and in here, we've got, showed the anise hyssop. There's arugula, a couple varieties of red Russian kale and red boar kale. A um, whole bunch of flats of uh, giant thick-leafed spinach. There's a couple flats of dill, a bunch of flats of leeks down there on the far end. Um, some fennels that we're trying out, just to see what they do. And then you can see down here is a continuation. Uh, these are more leeks. We're going to do a lot of leeks this year. Uh, they're stinging nettle and a couple of thyme. And this is actually uh, almost raw, kind of un middle unfinished compost in here. A bunch of hay bales, coffee grinds and then mulched with straw. So hopefully these will create a like, vague sense of radiative heat, moist heat, into the bottom of the trays that sit on here. You can see we can actually load this up. So there's two here. Repeat that all the way down this whole line to that far compost bin. Should be able to get, boy, 100, 200, maybe even 300 flats of seedlings in here going at once. And the beauty part is all this snow load a huge snowstorm the other night, is up against the plastic. As that melts, it hits the soil right underneath here, so it keeps all these beds really moist. So there'll be warm, moist stuff coming up through the flats, and then I can top water them as needed. So this is the first round of seed starting in here. Uh, hoping to do many thousands of seedlings this year. Ideally, 10,000 plants come out of these greenhouses this year. So we'll see what comes of that, and we'll keep you abreast as we go along. Thanks for watching this whole thing.